Once I said it a thousand times, you get out of those pagan, satanic, religious, Christian churches. Christians do not follow the commandments of the Bible. Christians do what they want to do. They make up their own laws, their own rules, and their own regulations. Come out of her, my people, and come out from among them. And it's real simple and easy to ascertain who are these people you need to come out from. Easy. Number one. If they keep Sunday, that's an automatic sign that you need to not have any fellowship with these commandment-breaking, wicked deceivers and seducers and bewitchers of the truth. Simple. All right. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. God's good. Most high, we bless you for allowing us to come to this study here tonight. We do need a, the spirit of the ancient of our fathers that you've given to comprehend this word. We have too many obstacles in front of our mind and behind and all around it. Help us with our understanding and open it up in the magnificent name of Yahshua. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Of course, you know, all our help do come from Yah, right? And if it don't come from him, we ain't get no help at all anyway. Isn't that true? All right. I'm going to recap something here and then add a little bit more to it here simply because of the nature and the way that we are going. You understand what I mean? The nature and way that we are going. Um, I'm not putting down Hebrew versus Greek, meaning Hebrew versus Greek as far as the way. I'm talking about thought, the way we process thought. Uh, many people have never heard this, and um, there's a reason why many people are not transformed. The reason why they're not transformed because they refuse to renew their minds. Because the only way that your mind can be renewed is you have to immerse yourself in these scriptures right here. And not from your own vain thoughts and your own vain ways. It has to come from here. And the worst mistake that people make over and over and over again, I've seen over the years, is that when they've got a question about something, the first thing they do, now day, modern day, they'll run to YouTube and look and see what some other teacher has to say about it. Or they'll try to order a book and see what somebody else has to say about it. When I personally have always found safety in what Moses and the prophets, the apostles and what Yahshua has said. If you understand me, you can't go wrong with them. You can't get no more concrete with that. Because if you venture out into other uh, doctrines or other philosophies or what other people have to say, you're going to go off. You're going to go off because whether we like it, comprehend it, or understand it or not, we all, every single one of us, have a very high bias opinion about things. Amen. And even when we read this, we have to make sure that we're doing our own personal due diligence. Do not insert our own personal beliefs and our own personal theories and philosophies and ideas. That's the reason why most of you are upset about y'all's program, no matter what it is, because of your personal opinion. Not that you're trying to get the mind of y'all. It's just that you're offended because your mind is not of y'all. Does that make any sense? And it's easily settled. Whatever he says, whatever the prophet says, that's the end of it. That settles it. And everything else is theater and rhetoric. It's all it is. It's really just, it's a circus. It's a dog and pony show. And if you stay concretely like that, you'll be able to easily hear when the trumpet, or some trumpet, gives a, a different sound. It's easy. Because anytime time you don't have to know nothing that these people teach out here. All you have to know is what this is, and it'll be revealed to you clearly what everybody else is talking about. You go, well, that's off right there. That's off right there. 
So all modern day translations of scriptures are written from a Western perspective and point of view. Y'all understand that, right? Over and over again, it's not that we're trying to dismantle the book. We're not dismantling. You can't dismantle the book. And when I say dismantle the book, I'm not talking about this book. Is that making this easy, simple? I'm not talking about this book. This book can easily be dismantled. All right, follow me? You can easily show where the, man, the pen and the hand of man has been all over it. Now, has the man, hand of man been all over the original? Sure it was. So how do you square that? How do you rectify that? It's very simple. When Yah spoke to Moses, and he spoke to the prophets, he spoke to the apostles, he's, and he definitely was speaking through Yahshua, every single one of them were inspired by the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit. But anybody that translates, Anybody got their own personal opinions and philosophies? There ain't a lick of inspiration under them whatsoever at all. See, that's called concrete thinking. That's called staying to the plumb line, not going to the left or to the right. We're not like the Greeks where we're sitting around listening to hear some new thing. There ain't nothing new. Nothing new under the sun. You see what I mean? And when you get finished with this new thing, did it satisfy you? Did it make you more set apart? Has it made you more diligent? Because the last time I checked, we're in a race. And in case you hadn't figured it out, I ain't let nobody beat me in this race. <laughs> no, I ain't either. I'm always be one step faster than the fastest man. Y'all hear me? And if you get close to me, I'm going to trip you. I'm there to get the prize. You follow me? And I found safety sticking with what, what this says. Now, when I say what this says, you are going to have to look behind the, where's my little point at? You're going to have to look behind these um, Western perspectives. I don't care what Bible did you go to in any different culture. Whatever way it's translated, they're all going to have their perspective inserted in it. And see, our trouble today is, is that we view everything through our feelings, our emotions, and the lenses that we have been trained to look out of because of cultural biases. Not that we care nothing about this Hebrew culture. Not that we're even motivated to care about what they said. Or how they live or what they did. You follow me? There ain't no question of pants. Just read the book. No question. Of, ain't no question of makeup. Just read the book. There's no question in whatsoever at all. There ain't no question why a man should cover his head. Yo, just read the book. All these questions that people argue over day in and day out. It's all because of the minds of men. It's easily settled right here. And what happens is, is that when people get frustrated at your hardline stance of what this is, then they'll ostracize you, get rid of you, and go seek out someone that's speaking what they're saying, only to create another argument again. English-speaking people are trained to learn and to think in the abstract and not from the concrete Hebraic model. Scriptures are not Greco-Roman, they're not Islamic, they're not, it, 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 but yeah, we do have an English translation, is that right? So therefore, when you read the Bible, you are reading it from a Western perspective. So when you read this book right here, it's coming from a Western translation. That's why we, it says King James Version, Young's Literal Translation. Y'all begin to understand this? In other words, these are what their mind is telling them. You get it? Even though King James didn't translate one word in it. But he did decide to put his name in there, though. You get it? So therefore, when you read the Bible, you're reading it from a Western perspective, and you understand from a Western perspective. If you do that, you are flawed. You, the reader, do not know Hebrew words, Hebraic words. Neither do I. 
including the people who think that they know Hebrew words because they speak some form of Hebrew, they're not speaking the same Hebrew that Moses spoke. That language is a dead language. That's why it's important to have the Ruach because the Spirit and the Word will always agree and you've got to have the Spirit because the Spirit will always confirm the Word. In other words, Shemaim or heaven, it will answer if you have the truth or not. So concepts and ideas have been replaced by abstract ones in these translations. Now, remember we went over this word some time ago, syncretism? There you go. That's, I'll take your, 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 because I can't talk anyway. See, my tongue is culturally defined to go another way. We call it syncretism? Syncretism. I don't see that, but we'll go with it. The combination of different forms of belief or practices. The fusion of two or more, fusion, 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 or two or more original, different inflectional forms. All right? Syncretism, is that right? Or syncretism? That still don't look like it to me. But anyway, we'll go with it. It's the combination of different, often seemingly contradictory beliefs. Often, key word, seemingly contradictory beliefs while melding practices of various schools of what? Thought. Has nothing to do with this. It's just bringing this school and this school. You know there was a school of Hillel and the school of Shemai. You know, they schools of thoughts. You get it? They get together, put their head in it, ain't got nothing to do with the spirit. Just what we thinking. You get it? Uh, syncretism involves the merger or the analyzing, analyzing, angelizing of several original discrete traditions, especially in theology and mythology of religion. Notice, of what? This is not a religion. This is a family book. Y'all get it? Thus a certain the underlining unit and allow, you could tell I didn't write this. I, you, I, I, I don't write like this. I'll clearly let you know I didn't write this. You can tell I ain't that intelligent. Um, underlining unit and allowing for an exclusive approach to other faiths. Syncreticism also occurs commonly in expressions of arts and culture known as, what's that word? What's that word, man? Eclecticism, that's good enough. As well as politics, syncretic or politics. Now, Plato, we've all heard about him, right? We heard about, we heard about Plato in this culture before we heard about Yahshua. Plato helped to lay the foundations of Western philosophy and science. Alfred North Whitehead once noted, and this is what he said about Plato, the safest general characterization of the European philosophical tradition is that it what? Consists, consists of a series of footnotes to Plato. So who has our thoughts originated from then? When you go to these schools, where does it come from? Now, Colossians 2.8 says, you beware, beware, lest any man spoil you through what? Philosophy. Philosophy. And what do we get spoiled from? Philosophy. And vain deceit, which is nothing more than an outright lie. <laughs> so we warn against philosophy, vain deceit, are right, you following me? And traditions. Laws of this world cause rudiments, and then it sums it all up by saying, which are not after Christ. So all of them get strikes. I keep telling you, y'all is not that difficult to understand. He already knew how base we already were. Does that make sense? The Platonic model of love or friendship, intimate and affectionate, but not sexual. You hear that? Their relationship is purely Platonic. Now, what is the Platonic model? It's confined in words, 
theories or ideas and not leading to what? Practical action. And what is Hebrew? Practical action. Even when they explain things, even when Christ explained things, he always used concrete analogies. Are you following me? Spoken, not in abstract. Even during that meeting, I kept hearing these people talk. I said, boy, you are just steeped in abstract, ain't you? I already knew after saying it the second time, he didn't even, under, he couldn't even comprehend what I was saying. So how can you speak to someone when they can't comprehend what you're saying? Is that making sense? I started off by asking them a series of questions uh, about why well, I asked them, can you, do you know what this word means? Or do you know what this phrase means? Or do you know what this word means? What I'm doing is I'm gauging the so-called intelligence of the audience. I'm an uneducated man. Scraggly, rough, stinky. That's all I am. And how is it that I know these things? Is that making sense? Abstract. Thinking is a level of thinking about things that is removed, removed, keyword, I should have highlighted that, from the facts of the here and now. And from specific examples of the things or concepts being thought about. You follow me? And one of the uh, angles that I went in that meeting was, I said, how many people want eternal life? Everybody raised their hand. And I went straight to the concrete story, or we can say account, of Christ dealing with what is called the rich young ruler. He asked him a question. Good master, what must I do to inherit? Very key word. Very key, because you can only inherit if you're in a family. You follow me? See, when you're born of this world, you're in the family of this world. When you're born again, you're in the family of Yah. And there's only one family. He didn't tell you to bring your theories, your concepts, your philosophies, your theology, and your ideas over into this family. That's the reason why none of you, how many of you out there can't be righteous? As I said to them too, again, I said, you know what's amazing about me, uh, I mean about y'all out there. Is y'all got clean mouths but filthy lives. You get it? Your mouth is clean but your lives live in blaspheming of the Most High Yah. So what must I do to inherit eternal life? And then the first thing he does is go straight to the concrete commandments. And all them have to do with the love of your fellow brother. You can say that you love your brother all day long. You follow me. But if you turn around and you slander him, you don't love him. You bear false witness against him, you don't love him. I hear what you're saying with your mouth, but in function, you don't love him. Is that right? You covet what your brother has, you don't love him. I don't know who you're trying to deceive, your brother or yourself. Is that making sense? The question, he wanted to inherit eternal life. And the first thing the Messiah said, go and sell all that you have. And I said, okay, all right, that's good. So he said, sell. One person tried to ask me, well, did he really mean sell? We let the rest of the context answer that for himself. Yeah, he means sell. What are we supposed to do, dress it up and make you feel better because you're in this modern day society? He said, go and sell all that you have. Give it to the poor. Who's the poor? The ones that have the gospel preached to him. Isn't that right? He'd have to be because he came to his own. We're already on a run of occupation. The Beatitudes was to Israel. Not the whole world. Does that make sense? And then I asked him. All these people got preachers, teachers, some of you old than I am and stuff. You make a whole lot more money than I ever would make and all this other stuff. And I said, we, I, and my, and my community, we've done this. What have you done? Say a few words and said, uh, Jesus coming to my heart and want to be saved. And you think that you're born again? And yet you're going to defy and, and read over that story? Somebody said, I want to sell all that I have. No, you don't. 
No, you don't. No, you don't. Because when you get here, or if you get to one of the places where you have to stay all you have, then you have to submit to those that are in authority. And then the, the word says, not back talking. So you really truly are not finished with your life like you think you are. You are deceiving yourself. Can't nobody do you more wrong in your life than what you've already had. You get it? See, so we love deceiving ourselves. We love thinking ourselves like this while we point and ask questions of everybody else when the truth is we are the one that's in question. That's what Messiah said. He said, you go do this and then you'll have, you'll be able to inherit eternal life. Then the disciples said, man, who in the world, he can't do it. Then who going to get eternal life? And Jesus said, simple. With men, this is impossible. But with what? Y'all, all things are possible. In other words, you're no longer your own. You've been bought with a price. You got to stop and quit you being like men and be like y'all. So it can be possible. And as long as you can't square your little sorry, pathetic mind with that concept that you call a concept, which is a concrete fact. You're always going to wrestle. You're always going to uh, body slam, twist, warp, and distort this word to suit your world. Yeah. That making sense? Yeah. Abstract thing is a level of thinking about things that is removed from the facts and the here and now. And from the specific examples of things or concept being thought about. Abstract thinkers are able to reflect on events and ideals. And on attributes and relationships separate from the objects that have those attributes or share those relationships. Concrete thought is derived from the senses. Seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touch. Which reflect experience rather than abstract reasoning. I had somebody today uh, call me up and says, I don't know what's going on in my mind. I don't know if it's from Yah. I don't know if it's coming from the devil. I don't know. Can you please tell me? I said, sure I can. That's simple. What's your problem? Tell me what's going on. Told me exactly what's going on. I said, that's easy. All you got to do is think concretely. Right now you're full of anxiety. And Yah didn't give us a spirit of fear. So it didn't come from Yah. Your joy is taken away from you. You're in a state of confusion. Is y'all the author of confusion? You can't fight against this devil in this world. It's fighting against something you don't have the word. See how easy that was? Oh, wait a minute. Ooh, we got to be spiritual. That's your problem. To be spiritual, what they're really saying, we really got to be abstract to the zenith. You getting it? Mind candy. Rotten mind candy. That was simple enough, wasn't it? Even you got that. When I say even you, that's not an insult. That's actually a plus for you. But see, concrete thought derives from the senses which reflects experience rather than abstract reasoning. A concrete thinker can count three cookies. A more abstract thinker can think about numbers. A concrete thinker can recognize that John likes Betty. A more abstract thinker can reflect on emotions like affection. You know how you can know that John liked Betty? The same way you see Isaac sporting with Rebecca? When you see that, you know there's something different. See concrete, you see it. But if she's sitting over here in an emotional frenzy, and he's sitting over here in an emotional frenzy, you don't know what that emotion is or where it's coming from. You can't tell me that they're sitting there Googling each other and they just, <laughs> but when they're hugging up on each other, 
and they're looking at each other, that's a concrete expression. Now you know that Isaac loves Rebecca. You get it? The terms concrete and abstract are also used to suggest how practical or impractical an ideal might be. In the sense, concrete ideals are those that have, what's that word? What's that word again? Revelance. Y'all know what that means? There you go. It relates to, to action. I should have highlighted that word too. A recipe is concrete because it states how a dinner, how to cook a dinner. A differential equation is abstract because it is not tied to action in this way. We quoted Colossians 2.8. Let's go over to Acts chapter 17, verse 16. Now, while Paul waited for them in Athens, his spirit was stirred in him. When he saw the city wholly given to what? Idolatry. In other words, he was quite upset. You know why he's upset? Huh? Because he knows what the word says. He's there to evangelize. Are you following me? Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him. Then certain philosophers, that's what we got today, an abundance of them, uneducated ones and educated ones, mostly uneducated ones on YouTube. Of the Epicureans and of the Stoics, they encountered him. And some said, what will this babbler say? Don't you know that's what they say to us? They call us a bunch of babblers. Other some, he seemed to be a besetter, forth of what? Now mind you, here's a, a society that is steeped and immersed in worshiping of strange gods. And they're going to accuse him of having strange gods. You know the reason why? Because all their gods don't speak like his God. So they automatically assume that since they have a plethora of gods, that Paul has a plethora of gods too. Because after all, if you only got one God, that ain't too mighty. You're hearing it. You got to get yourself into the text. Because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. See, even they knew that he was talking about Jesus being Elohim. But he was just one of many. Because that's the way they thought. That's why they says he seemed to be a beset to forth of strange gods. And they took him and they brought him unto Agabus, saying, May we know what this new Doctrine. Is it new? It is to them. It ain't, it ain't to him, but it is to them. That's like when you start really truly interpreting this Bible for what it really says. Notice how new this doctrine is. To those who are, we're seeing, I often been using this statement lately. Use it up at a meeting too. I said today we're going to find out who have ears to hear and the ones that are ordained to eternal life. Now you come in there. Saved. I can't do nothing for you. What you come here for then? You follow me? Then I had one young little whippersnapper. He kept wanting to try to. No matter, just total dishonor. What's wrong with this world today? I said didn't I not tell you from the very beginning. That I will promise you. I will open this thing up for questions at the end. But the spirits just. Just flicking and flocking and just eating them up because they got something in them that they believe is true and it's hitting them and they can't hold their peace. I said, young man, let me tell you something. I didn't come to listen to you. You came to listen to me. That's the reason why I'm standing up and you sitting down. I had to go that way, man. The other room was just, you can see it on the video, it just. <laughs> I didn't mean to try to impugn or demean character, but if you're going to have somebody be dishonored or disrespectful, then you're going to have to whip them with the stick of intelligence. 
by insulting what they call intelligence. Does that make sense? So that we may know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakers is, for you bring a certain strange thing to our ears, and we would know thereof what these things, what these things mean. For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to what? Tell or to hear somewhat new thing. What is that you just sit around all day long telling stories and want to hear something new? They're your whole existence in life. Words. Faithful. This is an abstract word because you can't put an image to it. You can't think how to be faithful. Something concrete in your mind is when you use this word. Now, in other words, I said no, but this word I'm talking about is this word right here. Let me go back and define this real, this um, faithful real quick. Because it is abstract, it cannot be discerned by the five senses. So all Hebrew words are rooted in concrete. This is the school you need to function by in order to understand the word. Concrete is opposite of abstract. If it is concrete, it can be sensed by the five senses. Now, over in Hebrews 2.17, wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in all things pertaining to Yah, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. So what does that mean? Well, in the Greek, the word faithful means trustworthy. Is there anything concrete about that word trustworthy? There's nothing concrete about it. How do you be trustworthy? Uh, trustful, faithful. All right. See, the person who showed himself faithful in transaction of business. You follow me? Now let's go over here and get the more concrete because we have to go back to the Hebrew to try to see what the Greek was really trying to say when they used the word faithful. And you're going to see the word faithful being translated over in the Hebrew, 1 Samuel 2.35, and I will raise me up a faithful priest. Is that what he's really saying in translation though? That shall do according to that which is in my heart. And in my mind, I will build him a sure house. Now we're getting there. And he shall walk before my anointed forever. Now, the word faithful in the Hebrew is the word anon or support or secure. You understand that? I'm going to build me a secure priest. If you're going to describe a tent peg as something that will support. Does that make sense? Word. The word logos, that's a Greek word. By implication, the topic of discourse about reasoning, mental faculty, or motive, or extension of computation. In the Hebrew, it's the ba, the word, word. Look at this. Word, a matter, as spoken of a thing adverbially, a cause or act, advice, fair answer, and such thing. Hebrew thought. An Israelite understands word is in itself not only sound and breath, but a reality. When it says in the beginning was the word, concrete. Since the word is connected with its accomplishment. You know what I'm saying? The word is connected with the accomplishment. The ball. In modern Western thought, American European term word is a poor translation for the Hebrew word the bar because for us word never includes the deed within. You know, all the spirit. I got a word for you. You got a word for me. All right, I'm going to hear it first. You ain't got no word for me. Because your word is not producing anything. Uh-oh. When Yah heals, is that abstract or concrete? It's concrete because you can see it, feel it. You know, out of one of those five senses, you may get two or three manifestations of it to know that it's real. 
You follow me? So once you comprehend uh, how you think Hebraically, when you read English or Greek words, your mind would think concretely. You would be thinking right. How do you know that? A perfect example. What do it profit, my brethren, though a man say he have what? See that? You have faith. And have not can save him. Good question. You see, this is the very reason why Americans are so cold hearted. They know how to give words of comfort. But action is not with them. Watch. Right action justifies right belief. James 2.15, if a brother or sister be naked and destitute of food. This is how um, Jacob is instructing us. And one of you say unto them, depart. In peace. Be warm. And be filled. Then it says, notwithstanding, you give them not those things which are needful to the body. What doeth it profit? Nothing. Nothing. See somebody posting on Facebook about some things that was going on in the family. A Christian person I know. All right? A Christian person I know. You get it? And everybody, we prayed for you. Hold on. I just got finished praying too. No, for real. Just got finished praying. Everybody, I, 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 I jumped in there and I said, you ain't done a damn thing. One of you are going to take out of your substance and give to him. You hear it? And you know what I did? To test what they call faith. I said, if you need help, which it's obvious you do, contact me. Now what am I doing? I'm testing this theory. I'm testing this boast. They didn't contact me. But people are praying for him. You get it? That's what you all used to come out of. That's why you're so cold hearted and cruel when it comes time to help your brother and sister. That's why you feel like you're going to do more than somebody else. Because this, this culture is like a cancer. It's steeped in you. Huh? So... Jacob said, those things which are not needful to the body, what do it profit? If you don't provide those things that are needful to the body, what good is all your spirituality? Depart in peace. Be you warmed in the name of Jesus. Y'all ain't hearing that mess? See, this is why religious people have learned how to say these phrases which produce nothing. I will pray for you. You have means in your hands or your bank account. Yet you will not demonstrate right belief because of the way you think. I'm not talking to every because you know in America, boy, you, you know, we, we're a bunch of shysters. If we feel like we can get something out of someone, we'll make up stuff. Now you got to learn how to discern. So, okay, pray for me. But give me what I need, brother. Isn't that right? So then he goes on to say, even so, faith, if it have not works, is what? Dead, being alone. In other words, faith must accompany works. Yeah, a man may say. You have faith. And I have works. Show me your faith without your works. 
And I will show you my faith by my works. There's a difference. See these, see his Hebrew apostle? See as you how faith wrought with works and by works was faith made what? Amazing, isn't it? Y'all like to have a, a money tree in my backyard. Really? Well, if you see a brother have need and you shut up your bowels of compassion. I will pray for a money tree in my backyard. You see how we do? And look what it says. It goes on here. And the scriptures were fulfilled, which said Abraham believed. Okay, we'll see how he believed him. He believed Yah, and it was imputed unto him for what? Righteous, and he is, was called the friend of Yah. So how did that happen? So you see then how that works, how that by works a man is what? And the first thing they be telling you, not by works. What? You don't shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. And not by Amen. faith only. See, Christianity will crucify him. Likewise, what, what did Abraham do to show that he was in, righteousness was imputed to him? He got circumcised. That was the first thing. And then he put his son smack on the altar. And he didn't stop on the upswing. The, the angel of the Most High stopped him on a downswing. Yeah. See, that's called having your faith tested. See, here in this world, anytime we even get up to the level where we have to believe y'all for something, we back off. We, we back way off. Because that is Uncharted territory. Get on and come on out in the water, man. It's fine. You get it? Likewise, also was Rahab, the harlot, justified by when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. Look at these people in the faith, faith chapter, they call it. So just believe, only believe that has its place. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. You can talk about being on community all damn day long. Truth is, many of you ain't thinking about it because you ain't worried to be with us anyway. That's a fact. I looked at Jaquan today, Laquan, Quan, Laquan, I mean, look at Quan today. I said, hey, pretty peaceful here, isn't it? Yep. Yep. Not like that wicked ass city, is it? Is that what I said? Yep. It's supposed to be here 30 days and she won't leave by the end of this week. You see where her heart is, don't you? In that wicked ass city. And she need to go back there too. how people convince themselves that they so much love y'all. Everybody don't love y'all like, like you think they do. They'll deceive you into thinking that they do. Over and over and over again, I kept pounding up there in Troy, Michigan. Some of you people are preachers and teachers and didn't even know which one it was. And how is it that I received this message on my own? Just by reading a book. And then it can produce the fruit and bring the fruit thereof. And you still sitting up there in debt. You can't even love your brother because you owe everybody every damn thing. I'm quoting scripture. See why I'm hating now? I told Sister Carol, I said, oh, she wants to leave. I said, that's fine. About another six years, she's going to want to come and stay 30 days and she ain't going to come and be able to stay a day. That's real talk. I just got finished scolding them brothers on Sons of Jacob. 
over the stupid question again over circumcision. It ain't a question when it comes to concreteness. First that which is natural. Then that which is spiritual. Should never come up. Not again. Then I scolded him and said, why is it that y'all come and ask me a question? Then you turn around and get on this platform and ask the same question as if you're going to get a different answer. What kind of spirit is that? See, this is how you get hated. Because see, this word, what I'm doing is revealing the very thoughts and the intent of the, and the deception that you hide behind. Now, if I see this, and believe me, I see a lot more, I just don't communicate it. I said I see a lot, if you want me, to, I'll communicate it to you. I'll let you know clearly what I see. If I see this, his sight is a whole lot greater than mine. See, we love deceiving our wicked self. Just love it. Love it. I'm this, I'm that. Had one more thing. I had a brother. They said, well, I, you know, I, I, brother, I'm going to go ahead and take some, some time and step back. I say, good, tell them to step back, step out, and don't ever come back in. Well, I just can't put my finger on it, man, but something just ain't quite right. Yeah, you. You ain't right. You don't have a 25-year track record of showing real true faith and fidelity. You ain't in no position to even cast a vote or a judgment. Walk first, then judge. I mean, I've been on a rampage all day long. Anybody been by the house today? By Anybody hear a bunch of hollering and screaming? Raise your hands if you have. Look at that. Some of them come to the door, they do this. I'm, all, I'm gone. I'm getting out of the line of fire. And if you think it's so easy to do, you do it. You rebuke your brother. Reprove your sister. Correct him if it's so easy. You got it right, ain't it? It's grieving, isn't it? It's very grieving. Yes, it is too. But you're going to find out if you really truly love. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. See, so much for the hypocrisy. And I told him, I said, man, I'm going to tell you what, man. I ain't going to ever be questioned of another Gentile-minded person again. I said, if there's ever a man that has ever demonstrated long-suffering this generation, I have. You better get your butt out there and start studying like them damn Bereans and then bring fruit that will meet it. I had a brother there I deal with. He said, well, they said they repented. I said, did they? I said, all right, so what kind of fruit have they bought with it so far? How long did they repent? Well, they repented about two months ago. Well, I'm waiting on the fruit. What's the fruit? Um, 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 they said they were sorry. I asked, where the fruit? Don't the Bible say bring forth fruit that meets repentance. What have they done to show you that they really truly are repentant? Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, bye, brother. Click. You see what I'm talking about? Now, I ain't using this jump on y'all because, you know what I mean, y'all just in the line of fire. That's all there. <laughs> That's all there. You, you going, one day, I told you, one day when my time is up, boy, y'all going to be, oh, Father. Boy, do we need a preacher. We've always said in every generation. Then we get one, we don't want them. No, don't want you. Look at them looking at me. Let us stand. Y'all all right? Yes, Glory to the king. Hope you learned something. And stop expecting more out of others than you're capable of producing yourself. 
Glory to the King. Father, we thank you for all things. Praise you, saying, seen deep down our hearts, magnificent name, Yahshua. Hallelujah. Shalom, King Coming. Look at him looking.